Hello, my muffins! It's Vicky! Welcome back to another candy tutorial. Today, I'll be showing you how you can make a square stitch candy cuff, just like this one. For the supplies, you'll need about 15 feet of string. I know that's a lot. Um, I'm going to be using this one millimeter elastic from Bead Tin. I got the rainbow one. I love using this one with clear beads. Don't forget you can use code MOODCANDY on bead tin to save 10% off. I'm also going to be using about 110 beads. And it's going to be 55 pink and 55 blue. And these are glow in the dark. Uh, these are the colors that you guys voted for in my live stream. Now you might need more or less beads depending on the size of your bracelet. I'm going to be making one to fit a six inch wrist, so about six and a half inches long it's gonna be. And then I'm also going to be using this key ring as sort of an anchor to keep the side I'm not working on from unraveling. You can also use like a clip, a binder clip, a hair clip, whatever you have laying around that will do the job. I just split the key ring and slip the string in there and it like, keeps it from going anywhere. I'm also going to be using a beading needle. This makes square stitch so much easier for me and also working with really long pieces of string much more manageable. And last but not least, don't forget your scissors. These work so much better than biting the string off and mine are limited edition. Now I did watch a couple of square stitch tutorials before learning how to do it myself and I did change the methods up somewhat to have it adapted more towards candy because the beads are bigger and the string is bigger and um, things just work differently with candy so I have adapted the stitch a little bit. Um, so if you've done a square stitch before and you're like oh this is kind of weird, um, that's why. So let's get started guys. I am going to get my 15 feet of string. So once you have this massively huge piece of string, <laughs> um, let's try to get this somewhat organized and folded in half. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's just ridiculously long, okay. Um, onto one end of the string, I'm going to add five of my glow-in-the-dark pink beads. And then I can <laughs> make them go to the center. Oh my god, this string's so long. What am I gonna do? Okay, make the beads go to the center. And then on one side, um, I'm going to take my key ring, or if you have a clip or something, and um, put it right up next to the beads on one side. So I'm just going to slip my string into this key ring. Easier said than done. And now that's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> and then I'm going to take this side of the string. So this one I'm just going to leave for now. Uh, maybe I can set it on the table so I don't get all mixed up. So I'm going to bundle up that half of the string and just kind of set it aside. And I'll use that later. But for now, I'm just gonna use this side that doesn't have the clip on it. And then I'm going to, on this side, slip on my beading needle. Um, and then I'm going to slide the beading needle about halfway down this side of the string. So this helps me like, manage the length a bit better so now instead of being like seven feet long it's more like four <laughs> three and a half um much easier to deal with and because my string is so thick it just kind of stays where it is um i don't know if other people's strings and 
needles will work the same way, but that's how mine does. Okay, so now I'm going to be alternating like each row different color. So this is pink. The next row will be blue. So we need pink, blue, pink, blue. I think that'll make it for one really interesting and for two much easier to tell between the rows. Um, so now I'm going to add a blue glow in the dark bead on my string. Ah, <laughs> here we go. So now the blue one's on there. And then I'm going to take that beading needle or that string and I'm going to put it through the pink bead that's right next to the blue bead I just added. But it's going to be going towards the outside of the bracelet. So put it through just that pink one going towards the outside of the bracelet. And um, I'm just going to hold this bead while I pull the entire string through. So now it's got like a little loop. So that's going to make it sit right on top. It's totally okay if like, you know, these aren't right up next to the key ring. It's all right. And now I'm going to have to take the string and put it through this blue bead going towards the inside of the bracelet. And I'll just put my finger on the blue bead so it doesn't go anywhere while I pull this string all the way through. And then I kind of like pull it tight and now it's right there on the top. It's so exciting. Okay, now another blue bead. I'm gonna put my blue bead on. Okay, and then I'll put my string through the pink bead underneath that going towards the outside of the bracelet. And now that's kind of popped into place. And then I'll place it back through that blue bead I just added, going towards the inside of the bracelet. Here we go. And I'll pull that tight. So there's what it looks like so far. Now I'll add another blue bead. Then I'll place my string through the pink bead that goes right under it, going away from the key ring or the clip, whichever one you have. And then place the string back through the blue bead that was just added, going towards the clip. And tighten that. It's looking so good so far. I really love this stitch, even though it's super time consuming and takes twice as much string as peyote stitch. It's just so cute. So I'm adding on another blue. Then I'll place the string through the pink bead right under that blue, going away from the clip And then back through the same blue bead going towards the clip. And pull it tight. Now here's the last blue bead of the row. Add one on. 
Then place the string through the pink bead right under it. In the direction away from the clip. And then place it through the same blue bead going towards the clip. So exciting! Row two is done. So now, time for row three. We're switching back to pink. Adding on a pink bead. Then I will place the string through the blue bead right under this pink bead. And it's going to go towards the clip. Then place it through that same pink bead going away from the clip. And tighten it. Now I'll add another pink bead. Then place my string through the blue bead right underneath that one. Going towards the clip. And then through that same pink bead I just added going away from the clip. And tighten it. Now let's add another pink. Then place the string through the blue bead right under that pink one, going it towards the clip. Then place the string through that same pink bead going away from the clip. I'm going to slide my beading needle more towards the end of the string a little bit because um, it's not quite at the halfway point anymore because the string's getting a bit shorter. Um, so now I'll add another pink bead. And place the string through the blue bead right under it. Then place the string through that same pink bead going away from the clip. And tighten that. Now I'll add another pink bead. Then place my string through the blue bead right underneath it. Then place the string through the same pink bead going away from the clip. And tighten that. So now we have three rows. Now we're going to switch back to blue. I'm adding on a blue bead. Then I'll place my string through the pink bead right under it, going away from the clip. There we go. Then place it back through the same blue bead going towards the clip.
and tighten that. Now we can add another blue. Then place the string through the pink bead right under the blue, going away from the clip. And then back through that same blue bead going towards the clip. And I'll add another blue. And put my string through the pink bead right under it, going away from the clip. Then place the string back through that same blue bead, going towards the clip. And tighten. Let's add another blue. Then place the string through the pink bead right under it, going away from the clip. Then I will place my string back through the same blue bead, going towards the clip. And tighten it. Let's add another blue bead. Then I will place my string through the pink bead right under it, going away from the clip. Then place it through the same blue bead going towards the clip. And tighten. Now we're going to switch to pink. So I'll add a pink on. Then place the string through the blue right under it going towards the clip. place the string through the same pink going away from the clip now I'll add on another pink bead then place my string through the blue right under it going towards the clip And then back through the same pink going away from the clip. And tighten. Let's add on another pink. Place this string through the blue bead right under it. Going towards the clip. And then through that same pink bead going away from the clip. Tighten that. And here goes another pink. And then I'll put my string through the blue bead right under it. Going towards the clip. And then back through the same pink bead, going away from the clip. And tighten it. Now I'll add another pink. 
put my string through the blue bead right under it. Then back through the same pink, going away from the clip. There we go. So now we have five rows out of 22 that I'm going to be making. Um, let's keep going. Let's do a time lapse and just keep doing this until either you run out of string on the side you're working on, at which point we will just rotate and use the other string, or until it happens to be long enough for you um, or whoever you're making it for. All right, let's do the time lapse. All right, so as you can see, my string is getting pretty short, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take that beading needle off. Then I'll take the key ring off this other side. <laughs> it's on there pretty good. How'd it get around the string? Oh my gosh. All right, so easier said than done. I'm taking the key ring off and I'll go ahead and put it on this side so it doesn't try to unravel. While I'm working on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So the clip is on. So I like to rotate rather than flipping these because the string might lay slightly differently on this side than the other side. So to keep it looking more uniform, I'm just going to go ahead and, and just turn it like that. And then I'm going to put my beading needle on this long string we haven't used yet. And I actually got like 14 rows out of that first half of string. And I think I only have like seven, seven rows to go, eight, seven, eight, eight rows to go. So I definitely overestimated the string length, but that's okay. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So let's do a few more rows on this side. I'll get you started. I'm gonna add on a blue bead. And then I'm going to place the string through the pink bead right underneath it, going towards the side with the key ring. And then place the string through that same blue bead going away from the side with the key ring. And then tighten that. Then we'll add another blue. Then I can place the string through the pink bead right under it, going towards the side with the key ring. And then place the string back through that same blue bead, going away from the side with the key ring. Here we go. Now another blue bead. Place that on. And I will place.
place the string through the bead right under it, going the opposite direction. And then switch directions again, going back through the same blue bead. Need to let some more of my string out of the needle. Here we go. All right. Gonna add on a blue bead. Put the string through the pink bead right under it, going the opposite direction. And then switch directions again, going back through the same blue bead. Don't forget to tighten it frequently. And the last blue bead of this row. Place that on. Then put the string through the pink bead under it, going the opposite direction. And then switch directions again, putting the string through the same blue bead. Right, let's do another row. This time pink. I'll add my pink bead. And switch directions with the string going through the blue bead underneath it. And we can switch directions again, going through that same pink bead. And tighten. Another pink bead. And put the string through the blue bead under it, going the opposite direction. Then we can put the string through the same pink bead again, but switching directions. Oh, my string has wrapped around this whole thing. So let me just pick that out. There we go. And then tighten it. Now I'll add another pink. Place the string through the blue bead under it, going the opposite way. Then place the string through the same pink bead, switching directions again. And tighten it. And another pink. Place the string through the blue bead under it, going the opposite way. And then through the same pink bead, going the opposite way again. One more pink bead in this row. Place the string through the blue bead underneath it, going the opposite way. And then through the same pink bead, going the opposite way again. So I need to do six more rows. Let's do a little time lapse for those and I will show you how to tie this off.
Okay, so now my bracelet is 22 beads long, which is perfect for my wrist size. I do recommend making yours an even number of beads long, um, just because the method in which you tie it off uh, might be a little bit different if you have an odd number of rows than what exactly I'm showing you right now. So just to make it easier to follow this tutorial, I would do an even number, but you can do an odd number too. You just might have to wing it a bit when you're tying the knot. Um, find a different way than exactly what I'm showing you. But essentially, um, we're going to want to, of course, bring the two ends together. And then um, I'm going to basically pretend that this side are all individual beads that I'm adding onto this side. Key ring is kind of in my way. <laughs> okay, there we go. So I am going to take my string, which is right here on this pink edge bead, and place it through this blue edge bead over here. And it's going to be going towards the inside of the bracelet. So it helps if you kind of envision this as a singular bead you're just adding on. And then I'm going to change directions and place the string back through that pink edge bead. And then once again, place it through the blue bead that was just added, changing directions again and going towards the inside of the bracelet. So now my string is coming out of this blue bead right here. And I'm going to then place it through the blue bead right next to it. And then through the pink bead directly under it, going the opposite direction. And then through that same blue bead again, changing directions once more. Then put the string through the next blue bead. Then through the pink bead right underneath it. And we're going to be changing directions, of course. I <laughs> gotta get the needle in there. Maybe a thinner needle would help. And then back through the blue bead directly above it again, going the opposite way. Then through the blue bead right next to it. And then through the pink bead right under it. Then back through that same blue bead, just switching directions. And then through the blue bead right next to it. So we're on the very edge bead now. Now I will go through this pink bead right across from it. And then through that same blue bead again. Now we just need to actually get these two strings next to each other and use them to tie the bracelet off. Now that it's all woven together nicely. Took the key ring off. Okay. So the side we were just weaving with, it's coming out of this blue bead. 
I'm going to place it through the pink bead right under it um, and then through the next two pink beads as well. And we're going to basically get it to like the middle-ish of this row. So then through this bead as well. And through the next bead. Then I can go ahead and take my needle off. Oh, wrong way. This sent, sent that bracelet flying. I'm actually going to put it on the other side, the, uh, the beading needle, to make it easier for me to thread this through. So now I've got the beading needle on the other side, and I'm going to place it through this pink bead. That is right under the blue bead the string is coming out of. So we're trying to get it to meet up with our other string end. And then through the next pink bead. And now the two strings are next to each other. And we can just tie those off. I'm going to use three square knots. If you're not sure what a square knot is, think like the first step to tying your shoes cross them and put one under and then make sure that you um, tug on that firmly and repeatedly make sure your knot is nice and secure now if you're using clear elastic be kind of gentle with it because clear elastic does snap relatively easily which is why I use the fabric coated elastic instead and then so now you can see the knot right there um, recently I figured out that you can just turn your bracelet inside out and wow, the knot is magically gone. <laughs> so let's try this one on. There it is. It's so adorable. I love the colors you guys picked out for me. And it glows in the dark, which is also a plus. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much. For watching my video i hope you're able to make an awesome square stitch cuff these are also available in my etsy store link down below and until next time guys peace love unity and respect